Shut up and sit down. Hello, YouTube. I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this is just a quick follow-up video of the video I made about um, extrusion widths and the Prusa i3 Mark II and uh, Simplify 3D and printing the 3D Benchy and whatnot. So um, I did a lot more experimentation. Uh, I ran some additional tests and I did some calibration. Um, I, what I will say is I did calibration that I probably should have done when I got the machine. <laughs> uh, so two or so years ago when I first started playing around with 3D printing I actually had this uh, device called a, a fire pick Delta um, that really I was trying to it was a experimental beta unit to about pick and place for electronic components uh, but it did have an option to do 3D printing and so I first got involved with 3D printing that way and that device required an awful lot of uh, TLC and so that's when I first started understanding what extrusion Wisps were and and e steps and all this other stuff. So uh, fast forward to today, um, you know I got this uh, Prusa i3 Mark II. It's an amazing printer. Doesn't require a lot of TLC, um, and I didn't really give it much thought about uh, checking some of the basic parameters of the printer. And so I do apologize uh, for the noise in the background here because it is printing away. <laughs> um, but I printed. Um, through a bunch of experiments, I ended up printing a full-size vase, which is much, much, much better than the previous vases with the eSun PETG filament. Uh, so a couple things that I figured out in the process. Number one, uh, the specific spool of eSun PETG that I have is about 1.72 millimeters, nominal. Um, not 1.75. So that means it's a little bit thinner, which means when you're extruding at a constant rate, it's extruding a little less than you would imagine, or you would want. Uh, secondarily, the Prusa out of the box uh, is under extruding by a vast margin. <laughs> uh, so when I ask it to extrude uh, 100 millimeters, it is actually only extruding about 83 millimeters. Which is above slightly over 20% under extrusion, which is a big deal. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really noticed it with much of the other prints that I've done. I've noticed that there's been some gaps in the top la layers, and i just kind of been blowing it off, thinking, eh, just, you know, finicky sort of slicey, slicer settings or whatever. Um, but I really do think it's due to the under extrusion. Um, I'm actually, uh, I haven't printed too many things since uh, I figured this out or since I stumbled across this revelation um, but uh, I'm making a print right now just to test the theory this uh, printed very nicely uh, there's only one area where there's a gap um, and so I, I configured uh, in the slicer to over extrude by 20% um, which compensates for the 20% under extrusion for the device but that does not compensate for the uh, narrower filament uh, which would result in under extrusion as well. So uh, I think I can actually probably go as high as 25 or even 30 percent over extrusion um, to get effectively 100 percent extrusion on this um, base. Uh, it turned out very well. It's not watertight. Uh, it's watertight up to about here um, and then this first ridge here one of them was leaking uh, but that's way better than before where it was leaking like a sieve from the bottom um, the bottom itself wasn't watertight at all. Um, and this is only, I think, two or three uh, layers uh, on the bottom, so it's not very thick. Um, I didn't really expect it to be watertight, uh, but I guess, theoretically speaking, it's supposed to be. So, um, again, just me not having that much experience printing uh, things that, that matter, as opposed to trinkets that does not matter. So, again, this turned out very well. I'm printing some um, ABS right now, actually. Um, uh, which is probably a topic for a different time. But uh, anyway, uh, one thing to note on the Prusa i3 Mark II, uh, you cannot uh, permanently save the E-step settings in the EEPROM. It's disabled in the firmware. Um, there's a whole thread out on the Prusa uh, website about that and, and why that is. Um, so I'm going to have to do some uh, kind of changes in my workflow to uh, put the put those settings into the uh, startup code or the, you know, the, the header of the G code. So, 
just wanted to make this follow up, uh, let everyone know that I kind of, I think I might have figured out what was going on. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll keep you posted uh, as things change, but uh, regardless, I got to tell you, if you're interested in PETG or any of the translucent filament, uh, this uh, eSun stuff is pretty nice. Um, now, again, in interest of full disclosure, I don't have any experience with anything other uh, PETG other than this eSun, uh, but I, I've ordered some um, Matter Hackers, I believe, or Maker Geeks, I don't remember which, um, PETG, just to play around with it. Um, so we'll see, uh, get a little bit more experience under my belt with these different things. I've been printing a lot of PLA, so I got a lot of experience there. So anyway, and I only have one roll of ABS, which is what I'm printing now. Um, and it's uh, got a lot of water in it, so the print's probably not going to turn out very well. Um, but it'll serve my purpose for now. All right, well, hey, thanks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like it, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Um, please subscribe. Uh, we're going to go with down there. Um, there will probably be some videos linked up there, I believe, um, on other things that I've done and probably this video specifically. So, again, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks.